first and foremost. I want to give all honours and praises and glory. Belongs, excuse me. Belongs to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham. Bahasham. Waha. Let's say that again, first and foremost. I want to give all honours and praises and glory. Belongs to my Lord and Saviour, whose name is Yahweh. Bahasham. Yahweh Shai. Bahasham. Waha Vaka Kwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. His son's name is Yahweh Shai. That's who I reverence and honours to the elder apostles of Great Mosul that taught me this truth and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters that are listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved with him these last days. And to what a by Shum Yahweh Shai for allowing me with another day to be able to minister this lovely, lovely gospel, which is able to what? Save your soul. So without further ado, we're just gonna flow with this bit. I haven't written anything down. And it's good to just take out some time of your day just to bring this word out, because the people need it. The Israelite, our people need it. So we're gonna start on, where should we start? Where should we start? Where should we start? You know what? We start on Ezekiel, right? It's Ezekiel 37. Okay. The hand of the Lord Jehovah Shai was upon me, was upon you. Ezekiel. Right? What does it mean the hand of the Lord was upon him? When the hand of the Lord was upon him, the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was touched by the Holy Spirit. Okay. He was motivated, he was inspired. That's the only way we can do these videos. Through that what? Holy inspiration. Right? So that's what it means the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. Right? And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord Jehovah Shai and set me in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. So it now, now it mentions a valley. So now we got to know what that valley was. That valley was America. That low land. Right? That's why it says in Psalm 24, the valley of the shadow of death which beginning with America. Right? And he set me down in the valley. So Ezekiel, this was like a time travel. Into future. The things he would see. Okay. Which was full of bones. And then bones. What is, excuse me, what is bones? What do you think of just bones alone itself? What do you think of? A dead state. Right? When you just think of bones alone. Our people are in a dead state and bones represent more the mortality. Right? Death. Right? That's why you've got a secret society known as what? The skull and bones. Okay? And cause me to pass by. Rem round about. So that's what Ezekiel was doing. Right? Passing round about the children of Israel. This is like a time. You could equate it to a time travel. Into the future. Right? And it says, And behold, there were many in the open valley. Right? And no, they were very dry. So what, what does it mean, very dry? Hmm? Without the word. Because the word's known as what? Rivers of living water. So without, without this word, you're dry. Okay, so what replenishes our people? This word. That's why the scriptures talk about this word being rivers of living water. Our people need this. They're dry. They're dehydrated. And that's why I've got some um, drink with me as well. That's why you need to drink. On a physical sense, if you ain't drank anything, what happens? You dehydrate. Next thing you pass out. So our people need that water, even though this is aloe vera, but it's good for you still, good, good for blood circulation. So our people need this water, right? They need this water, this living water. Excuse me just a minute. Okay. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? So, Yahweh was basically busting jokes with Ezekiel because the heavenly father knows everything. And he asked, can these bones live? Right? Can they survive? See, 
The thing is, you know, Jake has a sense of humour and so forth. Where do you think that comes from? <laughs> yeah, how way out of shy has a sense of humour, right? Can these bones live? And I asked, no, Lord, you have a shy power. They know it. So Ezekiel said, in other words, you created them. You know, okay, can they survive? Because without, without water, how can you survive? Without this word, how can you survive? And again, he said unto me, prophesy, right? Upon these bones. So that's what we're sent to do. To prophesy unto these bones. In the hopes that they wake up. Right? Hear the word of the Lord, you have a shine, because that's what causes what them bones to come together. Right? By hearing this word. Okay. Thus saith the Lord power un unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. So what's the breath that enters into our people? The law, statutes and commandments, that's that breath. That's what gives our people life. How do we know that? Because when you go to Deuteronomy 4 and 6, another scripture says, these laws, what? They're life. Keep the law so you may have what? Life. Right? So yes, it brings life. And you shall live. So when you're upholding the ways of Yahweh Shai, that's how you're what? Made alive. Okay. And I will lay sinews upon you. Okay, the sinews is what? The fibers that cover, that keep everything intact, your bones intact. Because if you didn't have the sinews, guess what? Your bones would be all out of your flesh. So the sinews keep things in place, which is what? Everything which connects the muscle tissue, fibers, like strings. Right? And I will lay sinews upon you and I will bring upon flesh upon you, which is what the understanding of who you are. Right? Israelites. Okay. And it says, and cover you with skin and put breath in you. Okay, so the breath is what the understanding. Okay. And you shall live and know that I am the Lord Jehovah Shai. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Right? And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. So you actually, when you're teaching this word, when someone gets it and it resonates, that, that's that breath being put back into them. They're being resuscitated. They're being made alive. Okay. Bone to his bone. So you want to ask, well, how do we heal? This is what heals our people. This is what puts our people back together. Okay. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above. Right? But there was no breath in them, so there's a, that's that differentiation. You're going to have those that have the breath, that full covering. And you're going to have those that, they have the flesh. The flesh is put back together, but they don't have the breath. Right? They don't have the understanding. Right? They just know. Right? They just know. They're Israelites. See, there's levels. You, you, got, you got those that just know, I'm an Israelite, and they just show it off to their friends. I'm an Israelite, and that's as far as it goes. Right? Which is it's still good knowing, but knowing just what? Half of the part. Right? That's what it means there was no breath in them. And then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. So, a few weeks ago, you had some Ishmael. I don't know if they were Israelites or Ishmaelites. I believe they were Ishmaelites. Okay. Come up and say, who are you talking to? And I said, I'm talking to the wind. Right? And this scripture verifies that. We're talking to the wind. We're prophesying to the wind. And if no one's listening, well, that's what we do. Prophesying to the wind. But there's people out here listening. And just before I turned on this camera, you had an individual that came up. Looked like an Edomite. Was it Israelite? He was inquiring of the, the 12 tribes chart. Right? Asking questions. So people are listening. Right? People are listening. Okay. 
Rent to thee unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man. And say unto the wind, right? Doth save the Lord power. Morning, mate. Morning. Come from the four winds of breath and breathe upon the slain. So that's what we're doing. We're breathing what? This word upon the slain. Right? And the slain, the slain would represent the slain would represent the dead. So we're breathing what? This word upon the dead. That they may be what? Resurrected. Brought back to life. Alright? And it says, so I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them. And they lived. Alright? And stood up on their feet an exceeding great army. And that's why you've got Israelites. Even those that don't have the breath in them, is still in a great and exceeding army. Even though they don't have that breath. It's still an army because they still know they're Israelites. And that army is all those different brothers across the world that are teaching, right? Even though all of them may not have the breath, right? But they still know they're Israelites. So that is still a great army. Even the groups that are teaching wayward, excuse me, it's warm out here today. Even these groups that are teaching wayward doctrines, right? Well, they still know they're Israelites, so it's still classed as a great army. Okay? And that goes back to what? Revelation 10. And today I ain't been in that breakdown for a long time. I'm not going to go into it because I need to rush up on it. Okay? Which is spiritually Egypt and Sodom. And their bodies shall be what? Raised up out of them graves. Which began in the time of what? Elijah. But I need to go into that breakdown again. And what was that period of time? What? 360 years? I need to go into that breakdown. I'm not going to speak of something I'm not completely, completely... Um, Went, went over, okay. But yes, that breath is being breathed back into our people, right? They're being resuscitated. So we went to that. Now, this is what I want to go into, right? Okay, keep going. <laughs> Maybe just a minute. So now we're going to go into Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and 22. For wisdom, which is the worker of all things. So, wisdom, it works everything, right? Everything is worked by what? Wisdom. Everything you see. A car motor. Well, a car don't run unless it's got an engine. <laughs> okay, it needs an exhaust, what? To let fumes out, right? And so forth, unless you have what electronic cars. Because he saw what's he complaining about as well? Oh, the emission, pollution. Well, hold on a minute. Esau, he's got electric cars. So, really, if he wanted to, guess what he could do? Get rid of the petrol cars and just bring out what they're electric. And that will what? Lower that them emission that he complains about. <laughs> okay. Because some electric cars are here. But guess what? Then what the car companies will go out of business. Because what? There's business and there's money to make right but everything is what through wisdom okay wisdom which is the worker of all things taught me so it's wisdom that teaches us that guides us for in her is the understanding spirit so with wisdom you also get what an understanding spirit okay holy separate and guess what when we wake up to truth we were made what holy separate from the world Right? One and only manifold, right? Many, and you learn many things. Manifold, subtle. See, wisdom teaches us to be subtle. Remember what the scripture says in Matthew 10 and 16? Why is a serpent harmless as a dove? So we also learn subtlety. Okay? Not to let everyone know what's on your mind, what you want to do. Teach us to be subtle in righteousness, lively, okay, clear, okay, and that's the, the Holy Spirit. It makes you very um. The Holy Spirit makes you animated, very animated. That's why sometimes when I be teaching, my hands are moving everywhere. Sometimes I'm bouncing. It makes you animated because it's what it makes you lively. Why? Because the Scripture says in John six and sixty-three, 
It is the spirit that quickened us, the flesh profited nothing. These words that I speak unto thee, they are spirit. They are life. Okay? Clear. Okay. Very clear. Very straight to the point. Very distinctive. Right? It's not, it's not, it's not beating around the bush. Five minutes into the video, you're still trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. It's very distinctive, it's very clear. Okay. Undefiled. Play. Right? And undefiled because once you wake up to this truth, you are not going to be defiled with women. Excuse me. Check if the internet's still budding. You are not going to be defiled with women, which is the other philosophies. Right? Plain, very simple, okay? Not subject to hurt, okay? Which is what ups it. Loving the thing that is good, quick, which cannot be lettered, ready to do good. Kind to man, attributes of what? Some of the fruits of the spirit. It says kind to man, right? And that's how we operate, you know, most of the time. We're not out here to be what, brutish. Steadfast. In other words, firm. Sure. Okay. And we're supposed to be sure of what we've, what we've been taught. Right? Sure. Free. Excuse me. Free from care. Okay. And when you, the more you're in this truth, the more you become free from care. The things of this world don't really bother you as they first did. Right? So free from care. Okay, excuse me just a minute. Free from care. Excuse me. Bit chesty. Free from care. Where else, where else, where else? Free from care. Have no power. So if you're free from care, you ain't gonna, you ain't, you isn't gonna be worrying about the things of the world too much. Having no power, and the power comes through what wisdom. Overseeing all things. See, it says overseeing all things, right? And you can only oversee all things through what wisdom, through understanding, right? You see particular things before they happen. You see when men try to plot, try to scheme. You know the intentions of certain men. That's you overseeing things, right? And that's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant um, attribute of a leader to be able to oversee, right? Oversee of all things and going through all understanding pure, right? Most subtle spirits. But wisdom is more moving than any motion, right? So yes, it moves, right? What's the moves? Okay. And it tries. She passed from going through all things by the reason of her pureness. Right? That's why the scripture says, Blessed is he who is um that has no guile. Right? So if, if you have guile, you're not pure in the sight of Yahweh why you have a shy. If you have guile, you know. She is the breath of the power of the Most High. The breath. Remember we went into that word breath in Ezekiel 37. She is the breath. Right? And breath is what? That resuscitation. You right there? Okay. And it says she is the breath. Right? Of the Almighty. So the word is the breath. Okay. This word is that breath. That is resuscitating our people. Okay? The breath of the Almighty. Right? And power of the, the Most High. Right? And Ezekiel talked about that breath that was what breathed into our people. Okay? And pure influence flowing from the glory and the Almighty. So, what inspires us? What influences us? The words. This is that pure influence. 
So, as you see a lot of this going on as well, I'm, I'm not knocking it. Uh, just um, every, every video, I was, I was inspired by this video. What, every single video? You're supposed to be inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an inspiration for us, right? Pure influence. So this is the influence. The Holy Spirit is an influence. It influences us, right? Right? So if you're influenced, you're possessed, right? Just like if you're under the influence of alcohol, right? So the Holy Spirit, what does it do? It influences us, okay? Pure influence flowing from the glory of what? The Almighty. Wherefore can no, no defiled thing fall into her. No other doctrine. And you got that, you got men, they wanna, they wanna mix this rubbish, this black, we're black, we're black. So how you been in the truth? What? Two years, eight years, so-called nine years, and you're still calling yourself black. That means you're not awoke, you're still asleep. And black is very a negative uh, connotation, right? Black ball, black cake, devil's cake, right? black pudding, black ball, right? It has a very negative connotation. That's why people, a lot of people that call themselves black, what they, it's like they have a black dark <laughs> countenance about themselves. Okay, so even worse, they have power to it. We're not black, okay? We're the Israelites of the Bible, okay? We are not black, so stop calling yourself that. Okay? But only the elect are gonna what? Wake up to who they are. The rest are gonna be blinded. Okay? So we went to that pure influence, know the far thing. She is the brightness of the everlasting light. The unspotted mirror. Right? Without any blemish of the power of the most high and the image of his goodness, right? Because wisdom is a reflection of Yahabashai. When you speak about wisdom, you have to speak about Yahabashai. Because Yahabashai is wisdom, ultimately. Yahabashai is wisdom. Can't really not speak about wisdom without mentioning Yahabashai, right? And it says, but being one, she can do all things, right? She can do all things. Wisdom can do all things. Right? And wisdom, why is it saying she? Because wisdom is referred to as, as a woman. Right? And Lord Wing, Lord, later on, I've got something in, in store for brothers as well. Wisdom is likened unto what? A woman. Okay? She maketh all things new. All things new. That's why when you wake up to truth, what do you become? What does wisdom do? It renews you. Right? Day by day. Because we're not perfect. Okay, we're going to have faults in the flesh. We're going to do things that are not so good, uncomely. Right? And then all ages entering into holy souls. What does it mean all ages? Different kingdoms. Different kingdoms are different ages. Entering into all souls. Right? Of what? The wise. Right? And even guess what? Even within the other nations. Can wisdom can wisdom deal with other nations? Of course. Yes. You have particular kings that were somewhat knowledgeable, right? In in different forms. Right? Enter into holy souls, mainly just speaking about what? Israelites, right? Because they're they're what the holy souls. Right? And it says, she maketh them friends of the Most High and prophets. So if you attain in wisdom, you become a friend of Yahweh Yahushai. Right? Bear me just a minute. It makes us friends of Yahweh Yahushai. Makes us friends. John. 15 and 14, 13. This greater have no love man than this. Greater love have no man than this. Men always talk about love, love, I love you. But anybody can, anybody. I've heard that so many times. Love, love. Anybody could just throw that around. Well, how do you love? If men talking about that love, they really love the brotherhood. 
you get your ass out on the highways and byways and teach. Right? You wouldn't be slack. You wouldn't just be doing this on the weekends. You'd be doing this as much as possible. Right? And a lot of men that are saying, I love my brother, they got hidden wicked intent towards their brother. These, these be the same men talk about, love to cherish the brotherhood. These be the same men saying that. Cherish the brotherhood or the Lord will kill you. But these same men have, these same men have hatred for the, their brothers in their heart. So they're hypocrites. Okay? Because anything can happen when we're out here. We'll, we put our lives on the line. Right? You are my friends, okay? If you do whatsoever, right? Whatsoever, I command you. So in other words, keep his precepts, right? So now let's go back to where we were. Ain't gonna be too long. We're gonna get to about 40 minutes of me shut off, right? Because very, very busy, busy schedule. But I wanted to sneak this in, right? And it says, for the most I love none but him that dwelleth with wisdom, right? Yahweh loves those that are seeking, so that shows, you know when you're seeking wisdom, Yahweh delights in that. He loves those no more than what those that seek wisdom every day. Doesn't mean you're not going to fool, you're going to make mistakes, ever, trial. But you're seeking Yahweh, he delights in that, right? For she is more beautiful than the sun and above all the order of stars. So wisdom is like unto being beautiful, right? Solomon is calling wisdom beautiful, right? It's like unto a beautiful woman, right? And it says, and above all the order of the stars, being compared with the light, she is found before it. So it says she is found before it because wisdom created all these lights, the greater light and the light for the, the night time, which is the moon. Wisdom created these things. That's how these things were formed, right? For after this cometh night, right? So you have light, which is what? Daytime. Then you have what? Night, right? But vice shall not prevail against wisdom. So we're gonna, we're gonna speak on Sophia more. Right? Let's speak on these things. All right? Ah, right, let's go to Proverbs. Bear me just a minute. Okay. Yeah, this take it takes time. You got a seeker. All right? Got to seek wisdom. All right? See if he can find something else. Okay. Hey, this is heavy. This is Proverbs 6. Right? And let's start at 15. Drink waters. See, I'm just flying with the spirit and nothing written down. Drink waters out of that own cistern. Right? And the cistern would be known as what? A water fountain. Right? So. Again, the system is what this word, right? I'm running waters out of that own well, right? We don't want the well of the other nations, right? We want to drink waters out of our own well. Let thy fountains be dispersed, right? So we're dispersing it right now, right? Abroad and rivers of waters in the streets. So we're dispersing. The rivers of waters in the streets. We're doing that right now, dispersing it, handing it out. Right? And it says, let them be their own, right? And not the strangers with thee. And thus where we went off. Right? We were clinging to what that strangers, we wanted to drink of their water. Right? Egyptians, the Babylonians. The Assyrians, we were drinking up their water, right? And that water wasn't good, it was polluted. That water was the, their philosophies. Okay. Let 
Let that fountain be blessed and rejoice with the wife of thy youth. This is the wife of our youth. Let our fountains be blessed and rejoice with the fountain of thy youth. And this is that fountain of our youth. Right? Let her be as a loving hind. A loving hind is a roe. And you look at a roe's face. You look at a roe, a deer. What does a deer's face look like? Looks like a woman's breast. When you actually look at a, look at a roe in his face, it looks like it's look it looks like a woman's breast. Right? Maybe just a minute. And a pleasant roe. Let her breast satisfy thee. So the breast is what this word. And I don't know, some of you some of you are different. Some of you may be breast man. Some of you may be um, you know, you like you like the bumper instead. Right? But there's nothing more beautiful than a woman that's got a nice Maybe just a minute, that's got a nice set, a nice wrap. Right? Maybe just a minute. Okay. So let, let her breast. Maybe just a minute. Satisfy thee at all times. So what's that with this word? Okay. And I'll be ravished with her love. So we're supposed to be ravished with Sophia. Bear me just a minute. We're supposed to be ravished with Sophia. You know, you rubbish a woman, right? And rubbish means actually to take as well. And men are going to get offended. No, what are, you, what are you talking about? No, that's right. You know, because you've got emotional men that, um, not even going to get into it, that approach the scriptures with what? A Western mentality, right? So it says, rubbish yourself. Always with our love. So we're supposed to rubbish ourselves with these scriptures, right? Get into it. And will what else my son be ravished with a strange woman? The strange woman represents the different philosophies and embrace the bosom of a stranger. So we're not supposed to be embracing the bosoms of the other nations, the philosophies of the other nations. Right? We're supposed to be embracing the bosom of wisdom which was given to us through the scriptures. Okay, bear me just a minute. That's what we're supposed to be embracing. Excuse me, just a minute. Right? That's what we're supposed to be embracing. So now we went into that, let's quickly go to Isaiah. Right? And we can go to Second Peter's. Isaiah. And when you're when you're sucking a woman's breast, what do you expect to get out of that? Yeah, pleasure. And what? Milk. Okay. Maybe just a minute. Maybe just a minute. Isaiah 20. We're going to shut off since well. This ain't going to be long. Isaiah. Isaiah 28 and 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge and who shall he make to understand doctrine? The words, right? Excuse me. What you, who shall he make to understand doctrine? Right? And there's only one doctrine, right? Them that are weaned from the milk, right? So you wean a child, you bring, you nurture that child from what? That milk, that breast milk, right? And drawn from the breasts. Okay. Simply put. But precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. And that's how you get a better, a deeper understanding of the scriptures. Here a little, there a little. Okay. And so we went into that. Let's go to Second Peter's. Hold on, 1 Peter 2, right? It's 1 Peter 2, and it says, As newborn babes desire, you know, start at 2, wherefore laying aside all malice, because you still got men, 
They want more wisdom. They want more wisdom. They want more knowledge. They want more understanding. But they can't even start a video without without having any malice. So how do you expect wisdom to deal with you when you have malice? It can't deal with you on that level. Because wisdom sees, no, I can't, I, I don't want to dwell in you. This individual, he has a malicious, wicked soul. Okay. Wisdom starts supping with you when you put away malice. And what's malice? Ill will. Lay aside the scriptures, lay aside malice. You got to put that aside. Right? And all guile. Right? Which is what deceit and hypocrisies. So we ain't supposed to be hypocrites, right? Okay. We live to the best of our ability, right? And envies, because you still, you still got that going on. But it, these are men that have been in truth for a long time. And, and you, can't, you can't even what, learn not to envy. If a brother's got a gift, it was given to him. You don't know what you have to do to get that gift, that special spiritual gift. But you're envying him. And, and you're wondering why you ain't been given that gift. Because you're envying him. Because you have a malicious soul. So the only way you have a can give you more of a spiritual gift, right? Is for you putting away those things. Because what? Those things are of the flesh. Okay. And evil speakings. As newborn babe, so I'm still a newborn babe. You got some babes they grow quicker than others. Right? Desire the sincere milk of the word. So you got a desire, sincere milk of the word. Right? Not to try to jump jump straight straight up to the top. Okay, a certain man would say, what, hurry come up. Well, are you a are you a hurry comer? Uh huh. You had an individual like that I was labouring with, and yeah, he was a hurry come up. Where is he now? Where is he now? Yeah, he's putting comments on um the comment boards, but there's no scriptures because he lost everything that was in his mind. The Lord Yahshua took that away. He took all of it away. Right? I'm not going to mention the individual's name. Right? But it's funny. It's, fu it's funny how things work. This individual, he left the truth. It's funny how no one does videos on him. No one really does videos on him. No one chats shit about him. It's, it's, it's funny, right? But a man that's still laboring the truth, that's no longer a part of your camp, but he's still laboring, you have the most to say about that individual. You see, a lot of men, they're not right. They're not right in the spirit. Desire the sincere milk of the word. So when you first come into the truth, you're not going to go into um, Daniel 7 and 9. Actually, no, 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 that is still, that's still milk, right? Because that goes into the Heavenly Father and His image, right? That goes into what? The Heavenly Father and His image, right? So you're going to look for milk scriptures, Deuteronomy 28. Right? And Deuteronomy 28 and 15. Okay? They're the topics you're going to get into. They're basics. Right? That's going to be the type of topics you get into. Okay? And that's what builds you up. And up that you can further build off it, right? Go into Lamentations, all different scriptures. You can build up on these scriptures. Okay. And don't look at it as our, because when I first came in, you may want to go to other things. Don't look at it as our, but they're going into this. They're breaking down Corinthians, certain revelations. But I'm still, so what? That's like you going, to, that's like you going to a gym. You only, all right. You got, what's it, 25, you got 25 kgs, right? You see, or you see someone pumping 25 to 30 kgs on, on both arms and you only